and welcome to unity tutorial of instantiating the prefab at runtime as you all know prefab comes in very handy when it comes to re instantiating complex object okay let me just show you the scene because you guys cannot see it properly this is what is going on underneath here if i pause it and run it again from the scene this is what you guys will see let's open up the scene you can see the prefabs being instantiated using single lines of code which you guys will see now so let's go straight to unity development environment and we put one of these together guys hi and welcome to unity tutorial in this very section i'm going to create how to instantiate a prefab using the unity documentation right here okay but the first thing i will do now is let's click on new and let's give our project a name i'm going to call it instantiating prefabs underscore and make sure 3d is selected and let's click on create project there we go and right here is the unity documentation that i intend to use so let's wait for the application to load up yeah unity development environment is ready the next thing i will do is you see where we have the hierarchy let's click and create empty game objects there let's come in here where we have the project click on the project and let's select c sharp script and let's give that a name i'm going to call it circle format and press enter ah let's go to the inspector right here click on that make sure the circle format is selected and click on open and that's opening up the c sharp coding environment okay now that the coding environment is enabled let's go back to unity documentation right here okay so what i want to do is I want the prefab to get instantiated when the program or at runtime. So I'm going to come right down here. So the first thing I want to use is the basic instantiating of prefab. And I, I will now copy these lines of codes. So let's take it from where the object was declared. Take it right now up to here. Copy. And let's go back to our codes. And write in here highlight this and paste there we go let me get rid of this so that it doesn't confuse you guys for a while now get rid of this as well and this right the method used is known as start but I'm not going to use start I'm going to use void update Cut that and paste it right in here there but the other thing I want to do is I'm going to add two more and I will then declare their variables here so this very one my prefab that will be one so we'll create another one that will be known as my prefab two one two and three so comma two three there so I have all of my objects created now let's change the the new vector I'm going to change that to 535 and I'll change this the vector of this one to 2 25 50 and 75 there we go first thing first let's save this and let's go back to unity right inside unity we've already declared or created our object there we go that's our object there now i'm going to go back to the hierarchy click on the hierarchy and go to 3d i'm going to add sphere there we go and this very sphere that i've just added I'm now going to go to the components and let's add rigid body. Go to physics, rigid 
rigid body add in. The other thing I would like to do for this hair is I want to convert it to a prefab. Click, hold, and drag. Drop it here in the project area. Now, I want to make sure that the lines of code is attached to the game object. So let's click on the script itself, click, drag, and drop it inside the game object. Now let's select the game object again. There we go. Those are the three objects that were created. Now drag the three, drag this fair, the prefab, drop it in the first one there, second one, and another one in three. If I run the program now, what you will see is you will see this fair being spawned. Let's click run. There we go. Look at that. Can you see that, guys? Okay, let's stop that for now. That is good. That is the whole idea of instantiating a prefab at runtime. The other thing I want to do now is I'm going to add a cube. Go back to hierarchy. Click on that. 3D object cube. And this very cube, I would like to convert that to a prefab as well. Click and drag, drop it right inside the project. There. I will now go to Unity documentation. Right here. I would like to copy these lines of codes. Scroll right down. For your information, I will include the URL of these very codes straight onto my description area these are the lines of code I intend to copy that is it those are the object declared okay that's the object declared the variables and the other variable highlight and copy copy okay there if you notice the method uses the void so minimize and let's go straight onto my coding area so i want to use the void so i might as well delete this because i've already copied the void and now paste there we go that's the void that i've already copied most of what we're doing is just copying and pasting because i really don't need to write any lines of code it's already written for you so you might as well take advantage of it now the next thing we want to do is I'm going to add two more objects here. This is the new object that I've just copied. So I'm going to call this very one prefab one highlight. And the next one is going to be known as prefab two. It's just to make things clear. And prefab three. There okay we now have error because there's no prefab one so we change this to prefab one and the one underneath i'm gonna have to copy another one underneath okay and change that to prefab two copy the for loop from here down here copy paste it right underneath and that is going to be prefab two bring it down is the other one that will be prefab three there all sorted now the next thing I want to do is the number of objects this very one I'm gonna copy that the number of the object there is 20 so I want to change the second one to 40 and change the name of this to number of object two that's fine so I have number of object of object one and number of object two scroll right down you see this very one here I'm going to change it to number of object two and that is where I have my prefab three now if I go back to the very first lines of code here I now want to change as follows change this to 60 
right and let's come down and also change the courtroom to I'll change that to 60 as well and change the the third argument to 60 now the third one let's scroll right down as for the third for loop I'm going to change this to 30 and change this to make that 60 there we go right so if you have a good look at these lines of code they are all similar but one thing that I want to do is I want to change this to tangent but before that let me save it before we change carry out any other changes and I'll just minimize this now select the game object those are the three objects that I've just created prefab 1 2 and 3 so we now drag the cube assign one there assign another one instead of creating extra cube that is the purpose of prefab you can reuse it over and over again that's it all created if I run this program now this is what you guys will see before I carry out any other changes there we go look at that you see that okay let's get rid of this close that so that you can see it properly close this as well and look at that that's a beautiful work of art now let's stop that let's go back to the lines of codes okay right inside here what I want to achieve is you see where we have the, co uh, the cause I'm going to change that to sign and leave this as sign and the other thing that I want to achieve is I'm going to write another or just create another variable for radius now just call the radius one and let's increase that to 10 and let's come right down to for loop number three right here just change the the radius here to one and change this back to one as well i think that should that should do that would do it so let's save this okay minimize that and let's come right in here try it out and see what's going to happen there we go guys you might not be able to see it properly let's go to the same view look at that let's collapse all of this so that you can see what I'm up to and this as well look at that guys that is beautiful okay so what I want to do now is now we're going to add a plane okay so let's end it and let's go back to our layer well, now drag this guess you guys now know how to get that sorted and here let's change this to one single column there now back in here you can't see anything because it's right here so back in here let's click on create and let's add a plane there and that's it and I'm going to change that plane first thing first let's move it down a little bit that's fine right let's change the size of that plane to 5 5 by 5 yeah okay that is fine and let's run it and see what's going to happen now there we go look at that that's beautiful but one other thing I like to achieve is I like to change the color of this very plane let's come into where I have the project drop that down and let's select material and that's my material there I'm just going to give that a name let's call it background now select the background go up here where we have our beetle 
change the albedo click on that and let's select maybe red yeah that's fine okay press enter now drag the background drop it inside on the plane there that is it done before I run it I'm going to click here and collapse every single component display that I have in here get rid of the project as well so that we can see what I'm up to or what the system is up to we can reposition it properly play and see there we go look at that let's go to same view and let's reduce that look at that guys that is the whole purpose of instantiating a prefab at runtime I mean let's end that again run it one more time there we go guys and that is what instantiating a prefab at runtime is all about I suppose you guys enjoy it you all have a nice day now bye for now and please do subscribe or join my channel to be a member of the channel thank you